it's only been two years. What's another couple of you know, minutes? Yeah, there you go. Where do we add our names, Vip? And, uh, I'm, I'm on I, I have it on the chat, but... Uh, oh, no, I mean, but we're on the page, as in... I don't yeah, the uh, you know, usually I have a section called attendees. Maybe I should just go and... I, I can I can add it if you just want to add yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, just a heading uh, attendees and then put your name in. I normally do fill it up, uh, but it's just, you know, I have to capture everybody's name. Uh, and it goes from there. I'd rather be uh, uh, rather be talking to you than. <laughs> so basically, this is you know crowdsourcing that that list. You got it. You got that it. Is, that is the idea. Anyway, before we start, we have to uh, do a couple of things. One is we have to talk about the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation, and we are following the antitrust policy of Linux Foundation, please uh, go to the uh, Linux Foundation pages or even to the Hyperledger Wiki and look for um, look for antitrust policy and you'll find it, the details. Uh, the second point is that we follow the Hyperledger Code of Conduct, which consists very simply of uh, respecting each other uh, not interrupting people unless they go on forever, uh, not uh, being rude and uh, being able to disagree without being disagreeable. So that's in short, that's it. And then I think Drummond, you have the floor and I, I have described Drummond as a super connector, super, uh, you know, Maven on the open source and contributor. And ever since we met back, I think it was in the San Francisco Hyperledger Global Forum um, that we then launched Indy through the Identity Working Group. And then the rest is history, as they say. Drummond, please. <laughs> and, there, and there's a lot of history. <laughs> it's ironic you say that, uh, Vipin, because one of the chapters in the book is written by um, Kalia, better known as Identity Woman. I think many of you know her. And uh, another uh, very dedicated uh, community member uh, that's anonymous, known as Info Miner. And, uh, and they wrote an entire chapter on the whole history of uh, the SSI community. And uh, so it's, and it, it's a great chapter too. It's, it's really, it's really a lot of fun. So um, I, uh, I thought about it uh, yesterday, uh, Vip and I said, you know what, uh, because we've been in the middle of approving the, uh, uh, the uh, typeset, um, what they call the first pages uh, drafts the, from the typesetter, I was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna create a presentation. I'm just gonna show stuff from the book, and we'll just talk about it, and you know, uh, and cover it. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen, and uh, uh, let's see. I want to just go start right here. Okay. So I I put in the chat uh, the link to uh, this pair. You see see my screen? Oh, always worth checking on that. Yep. Good. Okay. So um, the book is being published by uh, Manning, um, who's, uh, uh, I guess, one of the other, it's, it's, it's not a Riley, we tried it Riley, or, or so first of all, I should explain, I, I'm, I'm a co-author uh, of the book, <laughs> but um, actually I should go straight and say, so, so Alex, this book was Alex Prushat's idea, Alex based in Madrid. Um, I, uh, I told him we're, we were doing this uh, session here today and he's been on earlier, earlier sessions, but he had, a, he had a conflict. He said, no problem, just go, go handle it. So this is Alex's idea that we would need a book that covered this whole space. Alex, if you are not familiar with the fellow who started SSI Meetup um, at SSIMeetup.org. And, um, um, and I gave a number of early webinars. He's got, I think of 45, maybe over 50 now webinars uh, on all aspects of SSI. 
And I gave some of the early ones and I was really surprised at, at how many, you know, how, how many folks consume them. And uh, um, <laughs> funny story, uh, Marcus Abadello, who many of you probably know as well, and is an, one of the authors in the book. And I uh, ended up giving a, a, a webinar on DIDs right after the um, first meeting of the DID working group in, in Kyoto, uh, Japan, uh, 18 months ago. And uh, we both had to fly off to re the respective places. I was in London and he was, uh, uh, I think he was back home at that point. Um, but, but he had, no, actually he was speaking at a conference uh, elsewhere in Europe. And uh, we'd arranged to do an SSI meetup uh, webinar on, you know, basically a report out on the meeting. Well, we, there was so much that happened to the meeting and so, um, so much to, to cover and we were able to use the slides from the meeting, uh, plus a, a few other things. So, so we started the webinar, uh, and and it turns out Marcus hadn't slept in like 24 hours, and I'd had like two hours sleep before the our, our scheduled time. And and so, so we just started the subject. And we we went, you know, we were, it's supposed to be a one hour webinar, but people started asking questions, and we kept talking about it, and we went like two hours and 15 minutes. Um, on this very esoteric subject of DIDs. I mean, we went so far down the rabbit hole and uh, I thought no one is ever gonna watch this webinar. And I've had more people talk to me about that webinar. I oh, love that webinar. And you know, I'm like, really? So um, anyway, that's just uh, just <clears throat> a little bit of the, um, you know, long, long lore of this book. So um, we actually started it to, Two two years and two months ago is when we started into it, um, and the whole idea and the whole reason I agreed to do it was that Alex said, "Hey, you're only going to need to do a little bit because we're going to have we're going to just and he'd done this with one book before. We're going to get a bunch of contributing authors to write chapters about their specialty and their field and their perspective on this." And I said, "Oh, wow, that's really brilliant. That'll be a, a, a fantastic book to sort of you know really provide a broad perspective on this." subject of SSI. Um, and um, yeah, it didn't, I mean, it, it d totally did work, but it ended up being a lot more work than he sold me on to actually put the book together. So the page I'm showing you here is at Manning. They've got a, you know, uh, a homepage for every book. Um, and this, yes, is, uh, I'm pointing at the, uh, the picture, some Few folks have said a clown, really, and I said, no, it's not a clown. You know, it's a uh, it's it's an actor. You know, it's it's a it's a type of um, of uh, theater. You know, in which it's you know it's mass theater. I, I forgot the name. There, there's an explanation inside the the cover. Um, but anyway, um, so I want to stress that. By the time, well, first of all, I, would, I want to explain one other thing, which is so we intended to take roughly 12 months to get the book out. And we were only a couple of months behind when COVID struck. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, besides the stress on everything else, because we weren't there yet, we were maybe two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way uh, done. But, you know, it was just, it was just massive stress for all of us everywhere. So we we basically put the book on hold for about four months, uh, from March until about, till about uh, late July, and uh, and then we said, hmm, it looks like we're going to need, you know, like self sovereign identity is still going to be pushing forward, and we should still push forward with the book. And Manning agreed, so we we, but uh, I I was a whole lot getting busier with all the stuff that's uh, on digital vaccination credentials, digital health passes that is. Uh, consuming us uh, right now. So uh, so there was just a lot less time and yet there was, uh, the book had grown to the point we had, we, and I wanna show you this list, I'm gonna pop over. This is one of the final documents that um, we're, we're finishing before it can go into typesetting. And uh, uh, actually I'll start up here at the top. So this is a list of author bios in the book, okay? And I'm not going to, I admit, this isn't a read it. I'm just going to slowly go down through this so you get a sense of what it means to have over 45 at last count people contributing to this book, All right? I mean, this is huge. This is just, I mean, just the correspondence with this many. I, I love the fact that we end up with three Zs, right? That's 
That's how many people have contributed to this book. I got to tell you, every single one of those author contributions is, they're non-trivial, right? There's some really, really amazing stuff. I mean, you see uh, Kalia here, besides uh, the chapters she and Info Minor wrote on, uh, uh, on the SSI community, we also got, I want to point out, um, we had so much content contributed after we you know, went out to authors and said, do you want to write something about your specialty? that um, the original uh, uh, book was supposed to be, uh, they said roughly 350 pages. And I remember thinking, whoa, how are we gonna fill 350 pages? It's a deep topic, but without getting way off into the weeds. Well, by the time we had chapters back from all the authors that between Alex and I, we reached out to, we had almost 500 pages. And that was before the COVID surge and the fact that after that wait, we kept hearing from folks saying, hey, I'd like to do a chapter. Um, and so we, I think, I don't actually know what the total uh, page count, but I wouldn't be surprised if the additional chapters we had uh, took it up over 700 pages of information. Um, and so uh, what we had to work out with Manning at the tail end of last year is, um, what do we do? They were like, hey, look, we, we can make a larger, but um, both print costs and they didn't want to raise the price and other stuff. So what we worked out is they have a version of the book called the live book, which I'm about to show you, which uh, will have nine additional chapters beyond the ones that um, are in the print book. And the print book is going to have an ebook version that's available, I think, on four different reading platforms. And so you can get the whole thing there. But anyone who buys either one of those can then Get the live book and the live book is turning into you know one of their most popular versions because it is a live book and we can continue to add chapters uh it's a very very straightforward uh, process to do that so the book may grow even further so anyway that's uh I, I don't have time to obviously go through all of the contributing authors but um that's a little bit of a background in the book now if you if you go to this page that i put in the in the chat and the folks have joined more more recently i'll just stick it in the chat again, see there is a, uh, bum, 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 bum. it says pre-order, oh, okay, yeah, I see a question right there. Uh, so again, that's the, that's the link. Um, you can't, okay, so the, what it says me, Manning Early Access Program, you can access everything that I'm gonna show you here immediately online today. Um, the book is going into, <laughs> into production as if it weren't insane enough with what we're trying to do right now with digital health passes. The book is, we've been, uh, the whole process, the first you know, technical book that I've been involved start to finish, the whole process of, of copy editing all the chapters, there's a, a cycle that has to go through there of the 24 chapters. Then they typeset it, then you got to preview the typesets and sign off on all those. We just signed off on the last uh, two of the 24 chapters last night. Um, then we had to prepare the appendices to cover all the chapters going into the live book. And uh, we had another section called Landmark Essays in SSI for stuff that's already published out there that we want to point to. So we had to finish all that. That all just went in uh, about 1230 last night. So I don't know the exact production date, uh, but I, I, it's going to come out sometime this month is what I understand. So if you pre-order, you can, uh, um, you know, you, and again you can buy the print book or the or the or the online book or the live book i don't i don't know all the different ways it's packaged um i guess the two basic options are right here um anyway you can uh um this you follow this link book forum or or look inside they'll both take you over to this view which is uh the live book edition of the book and um uh to to, to just give you a sense of the structure um, in the live book right now are all but the last two chapters that I mentioned. So there are 24 chapters in the book, and I'll go over the, the structure here in a minute. Um, they, uh, oh, this is good. I, I'm just looking at the chat. Jim Mason is saying Manning is great because they offer registered PDF files, which Amazon does not. Ah, only Kindle there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, so it's it's divided into four parts and you actually can't see that structure uh, right here, but I'm gonna show it to you as I show you some of the um, uh, galley proofs. Um, and uh, the first four chapters, part one is basically um, the full, a full sort of introduction to SSI. 
Um, chapter one is, of course, the most general chapter. And then we uh, we expanded what originally was just going to be two chapters introducing it and, and, and we into four. And so that uh, the, the second one is the, the basic building blocks. So and, and just to explain, if you want, if you've got folks that you know, that it's like, hey, I want to understand what this SSI thing is, but I don't want to read a huge book, you can say, hey, just just read the first part of this book. Uh, because it's written so you don't have to be a technologist to understand it. Basic building blocks does cover, um, actually I'll pop in, you can see, you can, uh, you can see it. Basically these seven basic building blocks, right? VCs, um, the different roles, wallets, agents, DIDs, um, uh, blockchain governance framework uh, in, in the summary of the chapter. So, but these are not deep technical definitions. They're, they're really designed, you know, called inform layman uh, explanations of, of these building blocks. Uh, then we uh, then we said, okay, now uh, let's show how it works. And this is what actually one of my favorite chapters, uh, which I can show you the, the galley proofs of. So we said, oh, let's let's actually you know design a set of scenarios that build on each other to show what the interactions look like. Again, not with like sequence diagrams, not down at that level, but just so you can follow the flow of what's moving around, which is you know verifiable credentials and presentations and proofs and all that, <clears throat> to you know build up an explanation. <laughs> Dan is saying the current PDF is 406 pages. Yeah, uh, right. Um, and it's not again. There's more going in there. It's going to be with once they add the front matter and appendices. I think it's going to be just under 500 pages. Uh, and again, that's without the live book. Add the live book uh, pages, and I think you're going to get close to 700. Um, so anyway, um, this is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, and then, and then the last part was the. We really wanted to um, emphasize, uh, you know, what are the real features and benefits of SSI? You know, because this is not a point technology. This is a, a paradigm shift um, on the internet. And uh, so we develop uh, what we call the SSI scorecard. And what it, it ended up being a matrix of 25 sort of key benefits that we put into five categories. I'll see if I can get the whole thing on the screen here uh, and get this much. So uh, what we call the bottom line benefits that everyone's interested in, how I'm going to you know, do all these things, basically save money, make money. Um, um, you know, we put the, the business benefits right up front. Uh, but the the impact on business efficiencies and um, uh, business process automation was so significant within the full view of, of SSI um, that we devoted a whole second section to that and 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 we use these terms auto authentication auto authorization workflow automation <laughs> these are really really significant uh, pieces of the picture. Then what we did is we said, by the way, these are all presented from a business point of view. Then we said, we're going to present the same five from a, from a user experience and convenience point of view. Basically, these are you know, benefits to an organization, benefits to an individual. Um, and then we said, and SSI has so much, so much of an impact on relationship management and, of course, VRM, vendor relationship management, that we devoted a whole section uh, to that. And finally, uh, uh, we, we put all the things that basically um, our SSI architecture contributes to regulatory compliance, which is, is huge you know, across all these areas in its own category. And that resulted in this thing we call the SSI scorecard, which I, I can show you a, uh, um, a table of. So uh, I, that's, that's a quick you know, summary of, of part one. Uh, and then I'll just quickly explain part two is chapters five through 11 here, and that goes in depth. Uh, this actually is the part that I didn't anticipate the book would need, that I would just be helping with what we had in part one. And then all these contributing authors would be bringing this in. Well, the challenge was we had authors that were all sort of explaining SSI in order to explain what it did in their in industry. And we realized uh, that, you know, we really need to channel that into an in-depth explanation of what we've done in part one. So uh, I'm going to point out Daniel Hardman uh, was the primary person who brought the whole picture of SSI architecture together. Each of these chapters, by the way, in part two is roughly 30 pages. Um, so there's a lot of meat in here. Um, and uh, so he did the big picture. 
uh, Brent Zandel and um, Suya, I, I'm not sure uh, I can't pronounce her whole name, uh, from Consensus did you know, basic cryptography uh, covered enough, you know, so that you could understand a lot of the magic, you know, SSI being all the way down. Um, uh, brilliant, the longest chapter in the book is on verifiable credentials uh, by David Chadwick and uh, uh, Daniel Burnett. Um, you know, two folks, you know, co-chair and, 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 and one of the lead authors of the verifiable credential spec. Uh, this chapter is like a mini book. It is fantastic. It has some wonderful deep code examples um, and Jason LD of, of different kinds of VCs. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, Marcus Sabadell and I combined to do the chapter on DIDs. It's also um, actually, I think the VC chapter is almost 40 pages. This one's like 38. And uh, um, it goes it goes really, it, it basically would go down through four progressive levels of depth. It's the longest thing I've ever written about uh, DIDs. Um, uh, the PDF of that chapter um, I use uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll share with folks who really want to understand the topic. Uh, and Manning has said, that's okay. I'm like, look, I got to explain this to people anyway. I'm going to want to share the PDF. Uh, so that one goes way down there. Then uh, the Digital Wallets and Ages chapter was written by Daryl O'Donnell, um, who, who wrote the uh, uh, report, um, uh, the SSI wallet report. Um, and uh, And again, we went that report is like 85 pages. This chapter ended up being, a, again, about 38 pages because there's so many topics when you get into a, a full-on digital wallet. One of my favorite lines in there is a, a full-featured SSI digital wallet is a, is a development and maintenance project on, on the, you know, roughly the scale or close to the scale of a modern browser. It's a huge undertaking. Um, so you read this chapter, you'll understand why. Um, and then the last one there is surprise, surprise, governance frameworks. You know, everyone who knows me knows how, <laughs> how much I believe they're a really key part of the overall infrastructure. So um, anyway, tons of information in there. Basically, like this is a mini tutorial on everything that I know about that. Oops, lost that there in the wrong thing. Uh, so um, that's part two. Parts three and four um, switch gears and go in the other direction. Part three was uh, largely stewarded by Alex and his chapters uh, 12 through 17. And it's all about the social, political impact uh, of uh, SSI. And, and these topics and their authors are just, I, I found it just fascinating. I was originally, I was a little bit like Alex, really, you, you know, you. And he's written some of these, but um, I'll just quickly cover um, this one by uh, Richard Esplin, uh, who's at uh, uh, Evernim now, but was at Alfresco for like 15 years. Uh, it's all about how critical open source is to SSI. And uh, it just all oh, these chapters are generally shorter. They're, they're um, 10 or 11 pages, but the, the depth of, uh, understanding and analysis of, you know, this, this chapter is fascinating. It's like, I didn't realize open source is as critical as it is to SSI and, and the whole infrastructure it will support. Um, the next chapter is, is, is basically uh, Alex providing history of, of, of all of the development of, crypt, of crypto. And, but more than that, the, the sort of um, the ethos and, and the, uh, the values of that community that led you know, that you, you can sort of see where SSI originated out of that. Um, this one by Marcus Abdel is just fascinating. A lot of folks don't know uh, Marcus uh, spent a year at the uh, uh, European Peace Academy. He met his wife there. Um, and uh, so he's uh, got, I don't know why that's indented. Oh, uh, in any case, uh, it's, it's really a, a wonderful, uh, you know, essay about uh, SSI and, and peace. Um, and how they fit together. And then um, another chapter from Alex that really talks about the differences in, in, in belief systems between folks who use the term blockchain and think basically permissionless uh, blockchains and DLT for permission um, and how they're, they're just different worldviews represented and neither one is right or wrong, but, but they, they add up to different perspectives on a lot of things, including some aspects of SSI. 
So uh, another really cool chapter. And then lastly, um, Alex has long had a fascination. Many of I have, uh, many of us have on identity and money um, and the relationship. Um, we wanted to, and Alex tried to get David Birch uh, to, to help us contribute to that, but he was too busy. But um, so Alex wrote this chapter based on a lot of things, not just David Birch's two books on that, which I highly recommend. One of them is uh, <laughs> Identity is Money and the other one is Before Babylon, After Bitcoin. Uh, anyway, all those references are in there. Um, and, uh, but it really, you know, really makes the argument that there's not only is the relationship close, but it's likely to get closer as, you know, SSI wallets and cryptocurrency wallets are, uh, we predict on a convergence path over time, over time. So that's part two. And then part three is, uh, you see four of what I think are six chapters in the print book. Um, and that's part four is all about, okay, well now let's talk about SSI in specific markets and verticals. Um, the first chapter is actually a little bit of a hybrid. Um, it's by, um, um, oh, uh, uh, John Phillips uh, from Australia. And it's, it's his, it, it, it's not really about a specific vertical, but it is uh, his explanation of how uh, uh, all the failed ways he's had of trying to explain us society of businesses, what he's learned and, and, and how he recommends doing it. Uh, and it's very easy to read chapter. I highly recommend it to anyone who has to explain SSI. Um, um, and, and particularly this part here is all illustrated graphically. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then it sets up the rest of the chapters that go deeper into um, Michael Shea uh, and Oscar Lange, I believe it is. Uh, IOT, SSI and IOT. Uh, this is a condensation of uh, a lot of things in the white paper they produced um, from the Sovereign SSI uh, um, IOT Task Force. Um, and uh, then uh, this chapter here by Shannon uh, uh, Applecline, uh, who's been an author for a very long time, many has several uh, full books, uh, technology books to his name. He wanted to go deep into um, SSI and, and democracy and voting. And it's, it's, he's done a lot of research in this. This is a really, really fascinating uh, dive into that. It's, it's more optimistic actually than I am because of all the politics involved with uh, voting systems. Um, but it does lay out a, a pretty strong case and it goes beyond just voting. It's not just about voting. It's about all the things that happen around voting and how people make decisions and and share um, knowledge. And uh, it, 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 it really is a very optimistic chapter about what SSI can do for democracy. Um, and then again, we don't, in live book, we're, we're missing a couple chapters here. The, the one you do see here is we have two chapters that go deep into SSI and uh, in specific um, jurisdictions. Um, not surprisingly, of course, we have, um, um, <clears throat> Um, the uh, Canada. Uh, what I love about it is this this uh, chapter was written by Tim Bauma. Many of you have, you may follow him on Twitter, or you know he's, he's just one of the most deeply knowledgeable people about uh, Canadian um, uh, digital identity, Pan Canadian Trust framework. He's, he's I consider him sort of co-author there. He and his colleague Dave Roberts wrote this ride this whole picture of of how of digital identity in Canada and and why. The, the Pan-Canadian Trust Framework is really tailor-made and they're evolving it to uh, support SSI as a model. Um, it's, it's really neutral and it's the word central or federated or um, decentralized um, identity systems, but he provides one of, I think, the most compelling diagrams in the whole book um, that was, you know, that's based on his analysis of why SSI makes sense uh, and, and, and how it how it gets to the essence of, of, of you know, the trust triangle that all of uh, digital identity is based on. So anyway, great chapter. The, the, the one, the corresponding chapter for um, Europe and um, um, uh, the ESIF, European SSI framework and EIDAS, um, the electronic identification um, uh, infrastructure in Europe. It's like 30 pages and it's written um, by a fellow, uh, Nacho Emilio, who is an attorney 
uh, and but it's very active uh, ISO blockchain a bunch of groups and so it's it's really really you know accurate in depth analysis of of how SSI can be adopted or is being adopted in Europe and integrated in with EI DAS. So um, anyway, I'm going to uh, I've given you a quick tour through. Uh, like I said, there are two chapters still missing here in part four that are coming in, uh, and then and then the the uh, the meat version of the book will be uh, complete. And like I said, then the whole thing later this month will be live. Um, I'm going to stop there for a minute and just say, uh, you know, I've spent half the time just giving you an overview. I'm, I'm be happy to sort of dive into some specific chapters because I have, like I said, the uh, the galley proofs. Um, but I want to make sure that the folks that have come today, you, you're probably here to have you have specific questions about, you know, either about SSI or what the book addresses or or, or things like that. And so I want to make sure that um, if you have those. Um, you know, put them out now and I'll make sure I can, I can try and answer them. Otherwise I can just start showing you, you know, some of the really fun and cool chapters. Don't hesitate, please. Uh, okay. Please. Okay. Jim Mason here. <laughs> so Drummond, I have the book, um, bought the book. The second I saw it come out, it was like, no, 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 I need this. This will be the reference for everything going forward, I just completed a project with a state in the US on doing a prototype of using um, Indy Aries uh, framework to do um, basically, a, I'll call it a digital identity based on SSI, different than the regular identities they're doing now. And we also did verifiable credentials um, for business regulations, similar to what was done by British Columbia. Um, so that all worked. The question that's come down to me now, and I'm working on it and haven't done well on my end, is trying to find what I call better legal foundations. So I've looked all across the US and different states and at the federal government, and there's really not a lot of st solid stuff for drafting legislation around SSI um, that I can find in the US at all. So I went um, and I've been looking up in British Columbia a little bit, trying to go to other places over in Europe as well. But I, and I was looking at the book here and I, I did see the Pan-Canadian Trust Framework listed but I don't have any specific legal references that I, I can find. And I was looking to get the, I'll call it the legal foundations to go to the state and some other uh, organizations as well and say, hey, behind SSI, here's what some other people have already done to set a foundation that says, these are legal forms of identity or credentials and so on. And I didn't I, know if, you, if there was any, and maybe I missed it in the book, let's put it that no. way. <laughs> I love that question. No, you didn't miss it. I'm going to, uh pop open that chapter just is a this second. a new live action chapter i just discussed so uh, it's not it's not new and this is this is great You'll, you you get to see a little bit of the uh you know the gallery review process i'm going to share this um and i'm going to answer your question and, and 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 also sort of share what i think is going to be a a common refrain uh about this okay wait, hang on let me share this window here which is that one right there okay so um, this is, uh, you seeing this now? This is- uh, Yes. Okay, so this is the galley proof of chapter 11. And, uh, you know, classic thing, um, all, the, all the chapters except ones written by Alex or me have introductions to, you know, the authors of the chapter. Um, ironically, because, because we were doing that, we had done that for this chapter. And then, uh, and then, then they pointed out uh, oh, we don't really need to do that. So there's an extra paragraph here that I had to mark. So when, when you're previewing the galley proofs and you have any corrections, you got to make them directly on the PDF in red text. So that's why you see this great big, nope, take that out. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jim, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to actually want to go to, um, um, actually, it's interesting. I rewrote this chapter, but I wanted to quote from, this paragraph, a lot of it is now going down into here. Um, SSI's cutting edge technology movement and SSI governance frameworks are the cutting edge of SSI. As a result, there are still relatively few governance frameworks in production as examples to which we can point. So, and I, we put that right up front because, you know, I, I, you are experiencing it directly. There's our famous BLT sandwich. I'm gonna go straight down to the end of the chapter um, to where we go in and we talk about, uh, we sort of, 
decompose all of what's involved, guardianship, uh, legal enforcement. Okay, keep going. I can say this is like 35 page. What we, and, and you're not missing anything because what we've basically did, and I went in and updated this uh, last month to, uh, to bring it as current as I could to point to either governance frames, there are some references as you saw in there to the handful of legislation that's out there right now. But the short answer is um, everything's in process. Um, the revisions to the Pan-Canadian Trust Framework that really sort of reflect SSI are in process. There's some stuff in the current version, which I think is called 1.1. Um, but the, the the references are all in that in the chapter I pointed out um, about um, uh, Canada by by uh, uh, Tim Bauma. The references and the and the current state of of where it is legally in 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 the EU is in the chapter from Nacho Emilio that again should be in the MEEP edition. I think I think like this week, so so that the the, the online edition will have all of them of the main chapters uh, sometime later this week. Um, and if it would help, I can, I can send you a, a, a PDF of that. Um, and, and I know in the US, uh, there's, there was a, um, Wyoming has a little bit of legislation that's more blockchain than it is SSI. The first explicit SSI uh, um, legislation that I was aware of got all the way to the governor's desk in, um, uh, in California in the last session, but in the fall, but because it had a $3 million um, uh, budget allocation tied to it by one of the folks that insisted that's what it needed, um, the governor vetoed it because he didn't have it in the budget. So um, they're gonna try again this this legislative cycle, at least I, that's the last I've heard. So I, you know, I don't know of more places we can point uh, to, um, you know, legal underpinnings or regulations. I'm going to stop and ask because I just saw uh, Dan uh, Bockenheimer come on. Uh, do you, uh -huh. do you, were you going to were you going to uh, flag something, Dan? There. That... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you mentioned Nacho. So, um, uh, you know, he's definitely leading on this. But we, uh, uh, as a NAPA, we uh, uh, spoke with the European Commission on making EITIS, which is the Electronic ID and Trust Services more SSI friendly. Um, so we, we are lobbying for it. it. As you accurately said already, Drummond, it's not there, but we are asking uh, the commission, the European commission to uh, make EIDAS more SSI friendly. The, the only other thing, and I, I, I'm gonna dig into your chapter on Estonia, um, it, it is not SSI, but the first thing, you know, a lot of people look at Estonia as uh, the digital identity reference model but the first thing they did to the question on, on the table was uh, in, in 2000, they created um, their, uh, basically their Digital Signatures Act, the legal um, document that allowed for digital signatures to be legally binding. And that's the first thing they did back in 2000. And their first identity card came out two years later. But, that, but yeah, it's interesting. We're going the other way. Right, we're creating this SSI technology and waiting for legislation to catch up. In Estonia, they first legislated that it's legal to use digital signatures for public and private transactions, and then created the identity card. Anyhow, that was it. No, that's it's a really good point. Uh, and I did get to meet with Estonia directly on uh, talking to the people that run the uh, blockchain network up there, as well as one of the government uh, ministers there. And you're right about the process. And the thing it's theirs has evolved significantly differently. It's certainly not exactly SSI at all. Do you know what I mean? Uh, from a standards perspective. Yes. For what it's it, worth. It's centralized, definitely centralized. Yeah. Well, it's, it, you're right. There's a lot of other differences. And so I couldn't use that as a good reference point um, for sure. But you're also right when you point out the European Commission, because I'm on that European blockchain forum now. And those are the kind of topics that we're actually going through to do research on. So for whatever reason, they're focused on you know uh, Bitcoin energy uh, consumption, which to me is uh, the most uninteresting topic I could think of. Um, right. But uh, certainly, you're, you're, the way you put it, Dan, is right, that when you look at the IDES 
uh, stuff that is existing. So there's a bunch of states that have IDAS regulations. That Europe has it in a sense. All of that digital identity stuff in a mobile wallet does exist. And you're right, it's about trying to adapt it and say, let's make it SSI friendly, if you will, on the regulation side. And then one point on Wyoming, because I've spent a lot of time on that, is Wyoming isn't the model for anything because fundamentally they have, they're fundamentally, you would consider them to be what I call legal pirates in the world of uh, digital, um, uh, I'll call it digital uh, uh, identity, not only identity, but digital uh, legislation period. So as an example, their banking laws um, have yet to be tested against uh, Glass-Steagall and a bunch of other things, but they're way out there. They've made a whole bunch of assumptions that in a sense, other states would be at this point, what I call bold to try to recognize what Wyoming has done, even though they do have two digital asset banks running already out there. But well, that's Caitlin, uh, that's Caitlin uh, Long's uh, initiative. I have a feeling, uh, and she is quite out there. In, yeah, in terms right. of, <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, uh, coming- I'm gonna stand out like a sore thumb because I'm waiting to figure out when do they get tested against these different federal regulations. So in theory, sure. States own banking and insurance, but in reality, federal regulations will always supersede those. So coming back to uh, the point that Dan raised, which may have something to do with Jim too. Um, we have in uh, Delaware, for example, recognition of uh, digital and electronic signatures. In fact, that is the basis for DLPC, which is a way of uh, uh, creating a trade finance instrument that is uh, based on dig digital signatures. Unfortunately, the backing for that is PKI, but if you stretch that, uh, um, that particular law uh, towards um, you know, SSI, then it might become more friendly to SSI, but already the, the digital signature law allows for a legal backing for this uh, DLPC, which is you know, a way of uh, creating a, a fungible, almost like not, not quite fungible, but uh, a, to a uh, trade finance instrument that is negotiable as they say. Um, and maybe that'll become, that can become the basis because Delaware is an interesting state, it has about 60 to 65 or even more percentage of US companies registered there. Uh, so that uh, law um, might be a stepping stone to uh, further, uh, you know, to further the cause of SSI in the legal sense. Yeah, thanks. I actually looked at Delaware, but you're right. They didn't have SSI specifically, but I did see that digital signature law that they have there. And you're right. I hadn't figured out how to translate that exactly to SSI on my end. I I, I will share that um, of the attorneys that you know I've been working with over over the last couple of years, um, they they keep boiling it back down to well. All of SSI, all of the infrastructure, and I've, of course, you, as you can expect, the uh, trust over IP, uh, uh, for folks that know me, the trust over IP stack diagram appears in several chapters. Um, this is, you know, here in the, obviously to explain the role of governance frameworks. Um, but the, uh, what, they've, what they've come back to is, well, actually all, literally every layer from top to bottom um, ultimately relies on digital signatures, right? Even, even the layer one, uh, right, is it's it's all still basic, you know, underlying cryptography. And so, uh, the contention I've heard a number of times is you don't to get to, uh, you know, deliver on a lot of the SSI value propositions. We don't need new legislation. Uh, we we just need it to recognize. Uh, I I definitely know that what they were after in California, uh, specifically for digital health credentials, and that really is for uh, explicit legislative um, uh, recognition of a digitally signed health credential as, as you know, having the same um, uh, effect uh, as a physical credential. 
Um, uh, but again, you can argue that, well, if it's digitally signed, it is, you know, a digital signature laws already give you that, that, you know, legal admissibility. Um, they just, they wanted to make it stronger and they actually wanted to, 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 to you know, to, to um, authorize processes to use them that it was unclear, you know, would be authorized today. Uh, I don't know how helpful that is. I just, I, I do think it's, a, it's good as I, anytime I'm asked about, well, you know, how can this actually legally work? That's my first answer as well. It's all digital signatures. Uh, there is actually somebody on this call who's a member of the EIDAS, uh, you know, uh, uh, effort. His name is Stefan, and if he wants to say anything about the legality of uh, digital signatures or even SSI in the EIDS context, which I know that Dan, you already mentioned. Stefan, do you want to say anything? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, good. Um, well, uh, yes and no. What, what actually happens is in your, the, uh, digital signature, well, the electronic signature framework is uh, basically derived from the EIDAS regulation, which is, happens to be the same regulation that defined the uh, framework for uh, identity schemes. That whole framework is undergoing a revision process now. Um, and in fact, it's, um, I don't know to what extent you're aware of this, but uh, it's been announced that there would be a pan-European digital identity scheme. And it's possible, although not completely, not fully confirmed, that it would be uh, either based on or borrowing from uh, SSI schemes, right? Um, that you know, remains to be seen. I know that I'm not directly involved in that effort, so I can't really, you know, I'm not authorized to comment on this. Um, but that is certainly a development uh, that is uh, followed with great interest by the um, uh, the group of people working on the on the uh, on the EIDAS revision process. I, I again, I'm I'm no specialist in it, but Nacho Emilio's chapter refers to um, just what you were just saying, and 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 says the same thing, which is there's a. Uh, a distinct chance that you know that that it will uh, uh, <clears throat> that that pan Canadian I mean pan uh, European um, identity uh, uh, will will be influenced. I I'm always very impressed by the fact and and that that chapter talks about uh, SSI specific projects have received more funding in the EU by far than any 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 place. I mean Canada is doing a fantastic job, but the the specific funding that I've uh, seen is is for you know more general uh, you know uh, infrastructure. Uh, BC is a, is sort of a special exception for what um, you know John Jordan and his team have been able to do there, but the Canadian I mean the the uh, EU Commission and the grants around the European SSI uh, <clears throat> uh, framework and the SS SF Labs and the the whole incubation program they have there. Um, I've been one of the advisors there, but they've got, I think it's over 30 companies that have gone through that and are working on SSI components. It's 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 fantastic. It's a it's a very enlightened view on. Uh, there you go. I, this is. Uh, I, I can't believe we actually don't have a chapter from Dan Bockenheimer in here. I'm working with him very closely right now on digital health passes, and he's practically an encyclopedia. Um, Look at all these references, Dan. I should just, I got to save this chat. <laughs> and uh, can you still hear me? In fact, there should be an announcement made in this respect uh, next uh, month, actually. So, um, well, I mean, schedule it towards the end of April, maybe early May, but, you know, within, uh, you know, within a fairly short term horizon, effectively. That would be fantastic. Um, and it, it, it reminds me to, to, to mention what we, uh, um, uh, actually, since I have the galley, let me stop showing this one. Um, and uh, I have the galley proof on, actually, it's not a galley proof yet. It is, um, it's the copy edit proof. So you're gonna see a very marked up document. This is great. You know, you see uh, the sausage being made. 
Uh, but let me just uh, share it because I want to make this uh, point. Okay, yeah, this one right here. So all the uh, uh, appendage, all the front matter <coughs> is in one uh, Gallic proof that we've already been through, and this is uh, this is the uh, uh, the appendices, uh, which themselves run to what does it say here? Um, yeah, it's like 45 pages of appendices. In any case, what I want to do is quickly uh, preview the fact that um, the first appendix is going to list the live book chapters that we have um, that, again, they're not going to be in the print book because of the, the space limitation. But we have nine additional chapters um, already. And the beautiful thing with live book is we can continue to add chapters as there are developments like the ones we're just talking about, right? If if there was a you know uh, uh, you know uh, um, legislation passed uh, in in the EU, or and plus we we can also update you know existing chapters. So I'll just give you a quick preview of how what else is covered there. There's a whole chapter uh, from Amit Sharma who leads the uh, uh, compliance. Uh, where is it? It's right in here. Uh, Compliance and Inclusive Finance Working Group, the Sovereign Foundation on FSI Payments Financial Services. Again, that, that group is almost two years old and it, it's a condensation of all the things around inclusive finance. Um, uh, super cool stuff. Um, the chapter uh, that is long been planned, but but again, space limitations on VLEIs uh, written by you know the, the, the core executive team at, uh, at Glyph um, that uh, they, I think, presented here before. You've, you've heard that story, but there's, again, more detail there. Fantastic chapter on healthcare. Um, and what I love about this, I just had a, a, a Zoom uh, uh, last week with uh, Paul Knowles, Manny, and Nijar. If folks are not aware, Manny is an infectious disease specialist who started basically an SSI company for, you know, for doctors, true. But uh, when COVID hit, he, he backed off and was on the front line. But when I say front line, he caught COVID about two months in. So he was been through it directly, he's had it. He's, in, he's assigned to the hospital in the UK system that has, is basically sort of ground zero. It's the most active hospital in, in, in treating uh, COVID cases there. And uh, so he's been on the front line for the entire time here. And yet he still found, found you know, time to complete this chapter with, uh, with Paul. Um, so it just feels highly, highly relevant. Um, Andre Kudra, I think, uh, may have been a guest here as well. Did a, uh, uh, he and his team did a whole chapter on enterprise identity and access management. I am, you know, and 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 how it can be, uh, you know, adapted, retrofitted for SSI. Quite cool. Uh, chapter written by the uh, uh, CEO of Irish Life uh, in, um, in Ireland, of course, uh, on, on how insurance will be reinvented. And that's, that's you know, it's not theoretical. They are working on, uh, uh, you know, making that so in Ireland uh, in, a, in a pretty cool project going on over there right now. Uh, <clears throat> chapter um, from... Uh, uh, Red Cross, uh, Nathan Cooper, the Red Cross, with Dorm was uh, the world, um, uh, what is it? <clears throat> so we get the, the title down here. Um, uh, world Vision International, right? Uh, two folks that are working right on the front lines of that. And then uh, a chapter on digital guardianship, of which three of the four authors are attorneys in, in, in that space that have been contributing to that. Um, Fantastic chapter on design principles for SSI from um, Johannes and Yasmin, who did uh, a two-year research project to, to result in these principles, which inspired, by the way, the principles of SSI that were published in 15 languages by the Sovereign Foundation in December, um, which we actually added as Appendix E, the final one in there. And then a uh, most interesting chapter, I don't know if you, uh, attended the IAW session or have read Philip Sheldrake's writings. Uh, we, we end the book on a very down note, uh, which is uh, early reviewers of the book uh, that Manning had looked at it said, this is a very sunny view. You know, there's, there's not enough sort of doses of reality of how long this is gonna take or what could go wrong. So we wanted to make sure to include the chapter about what could go wrong because it is a very, very thought provoking chapter. And I've, Spent quite a bit of time with Philip, 
correcting some misunderstandings about SSI, but even after you do that, there are ways it could really go wrong. And, and so we said, okay, let's make sure that, uh, and he's been working on improving that chapter for, um, you know, for over six months now. So in fact, it's the very last chapter that's gonna be finished. So I'm gonna stop there. I know we're almost out of time. I just wanted to give you a sense of, hey, there's more than you, you won't find these in the, in the MEEP edition until they've been added, but then they'll be in the live book as soon as they're there. So I know we're almost out of time. Any other questions I can I can answer? Uh, when's the uh, book signing ceremony? <laughs> you know, first Is of all- Is it digital signatures or just uh, regular? <laughs> <laughs> wet, <laughs> wet signature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have a digitally signed copy of the book. All right, that's, uh... <laughs> With yeah, the hash I... uh, of the book as it exists. So I, what's funny is my wife was actually asking me the same thing. It's like, well, when a book like this comes out, what happens, right? And I'm like, well, first of all, that's what happens with books these days, right? Is you don't necessarily have physical, you do have physical books, but you don't, you know. And then it's like, plus you had COVID and I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I know that Manning does, you know, they do various promo things, um, but, you know, I, I mostly, and, and just so folks know, um, the deal right at the outset that we wanted to say, hey, we want all these contributing authors, like I said, we were thinking maybe 20, and here we have 45, is 100% uh, of the proceeds uh, go to the three community efforts that have helped us do this, right? IW, right? Um, uh, Rebooting Web of Trust and SSI Meetup, right? It's just we're just going to plow it back into continuing to grow the community, um, and uh, um, you know, and, and 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 forums like these where we learn all this together. So, uh, and I, I don't have it right here, but it was it was really great, you know, writing the acknowledgments in the front because uh, what I acknowledge more than anything is the global SSI community that has made all this possible because you know this only this only happening with all of us working together on it, and uh, I think. Everyone here and uh, uh, Vipin uh, for for holding this forum to uh, so we can <laughs> we can build this stuff. Wonderful. Um, as you know, if you have been attending these calls, we have covered a lot of that material. Maybe not in the depth that it in the book, but we have certainly did dids, IOTs, you know, SSI itself, uh, all of the you know, a lot, lot, lot of stuff, EIDAS, uh, like two years ago, uh, EIDAS uh, beginnings. Uh, so we, we like to uh, flatter ourselves that we are at the forefront of this uh, revolution. And of course, we have more than SSI here because we are identity working group in Hyperledger. So. That said, I think uh, we thank Drummond for a most fascinating uh, presentation of the book and of course, all the other others who participated, including Dan and uh, Stefan and uh, Jim. Uh, thank you. And I'll have the, uh, chat also in the uh, wiki page so that Drummond, you can get access to the links in the chat if you need to. Fantastic. Can All I right. make last comment? Uh, my, my, my thought about the live book, Drummond, the way yep. you're presenting it, the way you're thinking about it is incredible. So there's so much going on. And I know your whole life is pretty much dedicated to this and nothing else. You have no, nothing else going on in your entire life. So you won't be <laughs> on SSI for sure. But for the rest of the world that doesn't have the ability to drive either your knowledge, your skills, and uh, the time that you put into this, I really think the live book is fantastic because as you point out, there's three different organizations you're trying to benefit in a sense. So if you said, well, if, there, if you don't look at the live book, where are you gonna go? You're gonna go to all these other standards bodies and so on, and then look for real world experiences, projects and everything else. And if your intent is that these authors are gonna maintain the live book in some fashion on these chapters, that would be a phenomenal, phenomenal value to the world, period. I'll say that. 
It, I mean, uh, I couldn't underestimate how valuable that would be. That's like Wikipedia of SSI, if you will. Uh, it's a wonderful, I, I, can, Jim, can I use that quote back to the uh, Manning uh, editors? I mean, I think they're very enthusiastic. I don't think they realize just how, and, and when I was going back through the, um, you know, the, the, the galleys where we have to review all this, I, I got to like three or four chapters into it and my jaw was on the floor. I went, I can't believe how much information we've actually, you know, uh, all, of, you know, over the last two years. And I'm like, I could never hand out, uh, you know, it would take me, you know, just weeks to just compile all the references that are in there. And I love the point that you're making. The live book can continue to keep those live, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I really look forward to that. And, and by the way, anyone who is saying, oh, I I've got a chapter that I want to contribute uh, to the live book, um, just, just, you know, get in touch just <laughs> because yeah. it's really actually going to be a fairly lightweight process. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay. I know thank we're you. out of time and uh, thank you, Vip, and thank you, everyone. And uh, let's, uh, let's make it happen. Thank you. You bet. Take care. Bye.